our series Vaccinating America, the U.S. is distributing a second coronavirus vaccine and scientists are closely watching a new variant of the virus to see how it affects the pandemic. One of those scientists is Michael Osterholm, a member of President-elect Biden's Coronavirus Task Force. He's director of the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy at the University of Minnesota. Good morning to you, Dr. Osterholm. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Jamie. Good to talk to you again. I know. We, we've talked several times being from Minnesota. I do want to ask you about this new strain of the coronavirus being identified in both the U.K. and South Africa. What does it mean for us here in the United States? Well, first of all, let me just say that I don't speak for the Biden-Harris transition team. These are my own professional opinions, but I'm very concerned about this. I think that it does represent a real challenge to us uh, globally, and that uh, this particular variant, which is very different than any of the previous variants we've seen, could very well substantially increase transmission of this virus. And for uh, the fact of how the vaccines and others may protect us is really unclear at this point. I find that interesting because a lot of people are asking this morning, we've said that this virus is potentially 70% more contagious. What does that actually mean? How does a virus become more contagious? Well, what happens is, in part, uh, the virus actually may grow to a much higher level in an individual's throat and respiratory tract, and there's actually data from England supporting that, that the people who are infected with this strain actually have more virus, which then might very well make them more infectious. And uh, if that's the case, all you have to do is increase even marginally the number of people that any one individual infects, and then you have potentially very rapid growth of the uh, virus in the community that wouldn't have happened otherwise. And that, I think, is what's actually being seen right now in England. That's really interesting. What impact do you think this could have on the vaccine process? Well, I hope none. But hope's not a strategy. We've right. got to find out uh, whether or not this particular virus does challenge us in terms of how our immune response reacts uh, and, and uh, how it uh, handles the virus. Right now, we have to go full steam ahead with the vaccines we have. Uh, they're very powerful tools, and we just have to make certain that this new variant strain is not going to escape at least some of the protection of the vaccine. We do have a new Moderna vaccine being rolled out today. What are your thoughts on the rollout so far of both of these vaccines? Well, first of all, they're very powerful tools, as I just mentioned, and uh, I liken them to having a 2021 high-performance engine. Uh, the problem is, is that that engine's been put on a Model T chassis, and what I mean by that is that the challenge we have right now is this last mile and last inch. Uh, last mile meaning getting the vaccine out to the people who need it. Right now, state and local health departments have no resources to do this. Uh, the private uh, sector partners also are challenged. And so we've got to fix this last mile. And then we're going to have to convince people to take the vaccine. That's that last inch. And we know we have a sizable number of people in this country who are vaccine hesitant. We've not done a good job of explaining what these vaccines are, what they might be able to do, and why people need to get them. So we've got to get that done, too. Really quickly, how many strains do pandemics usually have? Well, each, each virus uh, is different. Well, our traditional uh, pandemic strains are as influenza. There it's a single strain that then over time will mutate. But this one is a coronavirus, and we've never seen a coronavirus pandemic before. We're truly in uncharted territory. Mm-hmm. All right, Michael Osterholm, thank you so much.